Hello, today I'll be talking about co-ops, and mainly why they're not the road to socialism. In recent memory, Richard Wolff seems to be the only one spearheading, so to speak, the path to socialism through co-ops. Now, as noble as this is, we need to point out a few problems with co-ops. Now, co-ops, or cooperative enterprises, are simply enterprises in which the workers collectively own and govern the workings of their respective factory or workplace or what have you. Basically, rather than having a small board of directors at the top deciding everything, the workers democratically decide on everything themselves. They democratically decide where to produce, what to produce, how much to produce, and what to do with the profits. Now, it sounds all nice and rosy and beautiful, but we need to analyze this a little bit. Co-ops, despite having some revolutionary potential, are nonetheless working within the capitalist framework, especially if established under capitalism. These co-ops that Richard Wolff is promoting are working within the capitalist framework. As competition is inherent to capitalism, and as a result of this competition, the cooperative and its process of production is made subject to the interests of capital, and by extension, that means also exploitation. What this means is that exploitation becomes a necessary condition for the life and survival of the cooperative. Now, how exactly does capital express its dominance over the cooperative? Well, mainly through the intensification of labor. So, for example, according to the situation in the market, workdays can either be prolonged or they can be shortened. Workers are hired and fired. The cooperative must compete with other, usually conventional, capitalist enterprises to stay afloat, after all. Hence, cooperative enterprises must employ all methods a conventional capitalist enterprise employs in order to stay competitive or otherwise they'd fail. As a result of this, workers are forced into being against their own interests. Workers must take the role of the capitalist in this case, and either turn the cooperative into a conventional capitalist enterprise, or if the interests of the workers continue to predominate, the enterprise simply fails. Now, being aware of this, being aware of the fact that these cooperatives will be subject to the uh, laws of capitalism, because they were working within a capitalist framework, is there any way around this? Could we possibly find a way in which cooperatives could work within a capitalist framework? Well, um, let's just do a bit of um, thinking. The only road to success for the cooperative working within a capitalist framework is to maintain for itself a constant stream of consumers. So they'll have constant customers uh, that will always be consuming whatever this cooperative produces. In doing so, it removes itself from the laws of the market, those being laws of competition, and can hence remain afloat. This produces problems of its own, however. So, for example, how could such a cooperative be established where conventional capitalist enterprise reigns supreme? For example, opening up a cooperative grocery store next to a Walmart, let's say, would be incredibly stupid because Walmart is A, already well established in the region that this, so this hypothetical cooperative grocery store would be open, and B, a Walmart would be able to provide goods at a much cheaper price than the cooperative. This is not a recipe for a successful co-op. Even if a cooperative manages to establish itself somewhere remote with no competition, it would have to limit itself to that region only and not grow outside of it, or it would run into the same problems that uh, the uh, Walmart example showed. It would also need to form some sort of consumer cooperative, so to speak, that solely consumes from these producing cooperatives. This is the only way, or one of the only ways, that they would be able to ensure this steady stream of consumers for themselves. Also, nothing is stopping any conventional capitalist enterprise from coming in and outcompeting the co-op. As such, conventional capitalist enterprises employ the exploitation of their workers to the fullest and hence manage to provide goods at a much cheaper price, usually. These hypothetical cooperatives would also have to limit themselves to, most likely, the immediate needs of the local population, such as, for example, food production. Cooperative enterprises limited to agriculture and not expanding into more important industries like metalwork or mining or heavy industry, etc., isn't a very promising road for radical change, I don't think. In fact, the only way such cooperatives would ever be able to even be sustained would be through the breaking up of the world economy into small local spheres of production and exchange. Modern-day, late-stage capitalism would have to revert to the merchant economy of the Middle Ages. Now, having said all this, what are the possible positives of cooperative enterprises? Well, there are a few. First of all, a democratic, cooperative way of running an enterprise could help alleviate feelings of alienation in the workplace. This is even supported by research, as cooperative workers are generally happier than their counterparts working in a conventional capitalist enterprise. 
And second of all, and my opinion, what's most important is that workers working and running a cooperative proves to the workers themselves that they do have both the knowledge and tools necessary to run the local and by extension worldwide economy. A common argument against socialism in general is that capitalists are needed in order for the enterprise to function normally, but this is blatantly not true as cooperative enterprises have already proven, and as, well, common sense also proves. Those working and directly influencing the course of production understand magnitudes more than a detached board of directors usually thousands of miles away. All in all, cooperatives won't bring about socialism on their own, and they can only be maintained permanently through the overarching aim of dismantling capitalism and establishing the dictatorship of the proletariat. In simpler terms, cooperatives can only be viable when coupled with a political strategy focused not only on creating an economic alternative to capitalism within the capitalist framework, but also aiming for the construction of socialism, for revolution. All in all, in my opinion, what Richard Wolff is doing is good because he's normalizing the word socialism and trying to open up particularly, you know, the belly of the beast, the United States, to uh, more left-wing dialogue. But at the end of the day, I think this co-op movement won't be very fruitful. But who knows? We'll see, I guess. Anyways, thanks for watching.